In this video, I'm going to show you how to store user information. So let's say you've got some information from your user. Your user has says, said that he likes the color blue. Now, instead of forgetting that each time you launch, the user launches the application, you want to remember that and then give that information to the user. So I'm going to show you one of the simplest way, probably the simplest way of doing just that, remembering information and presenting it again, even though the user has closed and relaunched the application. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at how we can store data permanently in our apps. So let's create a new Xcode project, make it a single view application, and I'm going to call it storing data. I'm going to set the language to Swift, which you probably also should do. And then I'm going to head over to main storyboard and place all the items and objects that we need for this tutorial in our view controller. So we are going to need a text field and I'm shortly going to explain what our app is going to do, but I'm just going to lay out our apps app first. Let's see a button and then a label. And I'm just going to make the label a bit wider so that it has the capacity to explain a long name also. If your name is longer than let's say Peter. And I'm just going to do some fancy stuff. Make the button have a blue background and the text is going to be white. See, make it a bit larger so that it's also easy to, to hit. And also make the label a bit larger, as I said, if you have a longer name. So this is, this is our layout right now. What is your name? And what this app is going to do, just to, just to display how you save data permanently with the help of user defaults. You write in your name right here, then you click this button and your name is going to be displayed there. And then we're going to do some fancy stuff so that next time you open the application, your name is still going to be there. So let's import all the stuff that we need. We are going to need this text field right here as an outlet. I'm, I like to call it input so I know which one it is. And then I'm going to take this one. This is going to be my output. And then I'm going to create an action with this button right here. And I'm going to call it action. Just like that, connect it up and we can get to the coding stuff. Just going to make the screen a bit bigger because now all we are going to need is this bit right here. Now we are going to try to do the way we would normally do it. So we would say output dot text is equal to input dot text. And this is awesome. This is great. And we will now see what the result is of that. And as you might guess, it will do exactly as we told, tell, told it to. And that is to display our name when we click this button. So here's our current state of the app. And let's say my name is Johnny B and I click this button, it will display my name. But let's say we close the app and then relaunch the app. And as you might expect, when I reopen the app, it still stands, what is your name instead of Johnny B, which is a bummer because we want our user to do as little work as possible. So we should be able to provide him or her with his or her name when he relaunches the app. So the way we do that is we save this input. And the way we do that again is to say user defaults dot standard dot set and we pick this one. So we can store any object right here and my object is going to be input dot text. For key, my name, and the second we have stored this name, I'm going to clean out the input text field so that the user can write another name without deleting what he wrote just now. Now this will save it, but how do we set it up in such a way that when the app relaunches, 
it displays the name again. Well, what we are going to do is we're not going to do use the we view did load method because it might not uh, be the case that all the elements have loaded yet. And if we then try to do something with elements that haven't loaded yet, we can get a crash. So we have to make sure that all the elements have loaded and that is why we use the function view did appear because then we're sure that the view has appeared and we can start changing stuff. And then we simply say output dot, no, we don't do that. We have to check if, if uh, our user defaults is empty because if we try to display this one and it is empty, we will get a crash because it will try to pull out something out of this, which isn't there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make x, a variable x equal to user defaults dot standard dot uh, object for key C my name so if as a string so if this does succeed we are going to continue on but if it doesn't succeed then we will have avoided crashing the app so if this succeeds then we set output dot text equal to x which is now this one right here so let's try to relaunch the app and let's try to give it a name so again our name is going to be Johnny B so let's type type in Johnny B I click the button as you see it empty so you can write another name in but right now it's Johnny B and I decide to close the app it's closed and now I relaunch the app and as you will see the name is Johnny B. Wow that was a nice rhyme. There, there you see it has stored the variable the name Johnny B and of course you can store everything you want to. You can store an array, you can do the exact same thing with an array, uh, with a boolean, with an integer, with a float, with a double with a string as we just did, you can store anything you want to as long, but remember that when you unwrap it, that when you drag the element out of the user defaults, again, make sure that you first test to see if the value is something other than nil. Because if it's nil and you try to pull something out of it, you will most likely get a crash. So make sure that you implement this one and then display your variable or use your variable. So that is how you use user defaults in order to store data permanently in your app. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click the subscribe button because then I will see you back in the next video. Thank you for watching.